All right, in this example, we're asked to use a graphing utility to attain a graph of an explicit solution, uh, given that actually we have the differential equation and the implicit solution. Remember, when it's not solved explicitly for y, it is an implicit solution. So this right here is implicit. And then we need to give the interval of definition for the problem. All right, um, a couple things that we should probably note here. The first thing is we need to treat this as a differential equation. It currently is, obviously, but it's written in differential form. And I'd like to treat this as dy dx. So I am going to make the transition to dy dx. Remember, I'm not technically dividing by dx here. That would be illegal. But I am trading out a dy for a dy dx dx. And I'm dividing both sides by dx. So <clears throat> when I do that, I'll get the following. Let's see, 2xy plus the quantity x squared minus y dy dx is equal to 0. And then I'll go ahead and solve explicitly for dy dx here. Now, something I want to mention is that <clears throat> we know now, having gone through uh, more material uh, in this section that we cannot guarantee existence and uniqueness if y is equal to x squared. That's a problem, right? Uh, remember that if we let <clears throat> the right-hand side be a function of x and y, then where this is undefined, where it has domain issues, then we know that we cannot guarantee the existence or uniqueness of solutions. That's not the purview of this question, but it's just to reinforce uh, questions that we or problems that we've been doing up to this point. So uh, <clears throat> this implies that existence and uniqueness can't be guaranteed. Um, or, yeah, cannot. Cannot be guaranteed along that parabola y equals x squared. <clears throat> but also, we if we were willing to, if we wanted to, we could find out what f sub y is. And remember, that just means uh, holding all va variables x as constants and then taking the derivative of this with respect to y. We get to this point using the quotient rule, and now we can actually simplify a little bit further, not too much, but a little bit. And this still leads to the same condition that existence and uniqueness is not guaranteed when y is equal to x squared. <clears throat> Again, that's actually not the purview of this question, but I just thought it would be kind of a neat exposition since this is an augmented lecture. But going back to the question at hand, uh, it is asking us to obtain a graph of the, an explicit solution, any explicit solution in fact, and give an interval of definition. All right, so let's go ahead and solve this right here. Didn't realize I was still on highlighter, but we can solve that for y. Now, how do you solve that specifically for y? It's actually not too terrible. It just requires you to think of this as a quadratic. Let me write that down. We have y squared minus 2x squared y uh, is equal to 1. You would complete the square, actually. Uh, or maybe you could actually do this. Now I'm looking at that. Minus 1 is equal to 0. And you can see that's actually a quadratic equation. And <clears throat> if you don't believe me, it is. A is equal to 1. B is equal to a negative 2x squared. And C is equal to a negative 1. It's a very common trick um, throughout uh, kind of the high-level mathematics to note that this is quadratic in form. And so now we can actually say that y is equal to 2x squared plus or minus the square root of 4x to the fourth power minus 4 times 1 times a negative 1. 
all over 2. So you get the following x squared plus or minus. Uh, both terms within that radical are 4, so the square root of 4 is 2, and the 2's cancel. So we get the square root of x to the 4th plus 1. So <clears throat> it didn't give us an initial condition here. This is not an initial value problem. So we can actually choose either of the um, branches as our interval of uh, for our interval of definition um, or for our solution. So um, I am going to go ahead and just list both solutions. So I'll say one solution, y sub 1 of x, is equal to x squared plus the square root of x to the fourth plus 1. And a second solution is x squared minus the square root of x to the fourth plus 1. And we're guaranteed existence and uniqueness as long as y is not strictly equal to x squared. Um, and y will never actually be strictly equal to x squared. And the reason why we know that is even if x is 0, <coughs> um, this x to the 4th is still plus 1. We, this, the, the radicand is still a positive 1. It'll never just be x squared. Neither of these are x squared. So we have existence and uniqueness of solutions everywhere for this. Um, now let's go ahead and graph these. And to do that, I'm going to press pause here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and open up Winplot and <clears throat> two dimension here. Oh, let me get this graph kind of more centered so we can actually see it. There we go. And what I'm going to do is first graph the slope field. Remember our differential equation, just want to showcase this. Our differential equation was dy dx is equal to a negative 2x and then y. And then that was being divided by x squared minus y. And since I'm doing this for posterity, let's go ahead and uh, make uh, the color in the background for the lineal elements want, uh, blue and then pen width 1. And we get this <clears throat> wonderful looking slope field in the background. And now I'm going to go ahead and graph both of the explicit solutions. Remember, just clicking back here, this, the explicit solutions were x squared plus or minus the square root of x to the fourth plus 1. So let's go ahead and take a look at that uh, equation explicit. Uh, x squared plus the square root of x to the fourth plus 1. And again, I'm going to go ahead and um, this time we'll make the pen width 3 so it's a little more vibrant. And I'll uh, do this one in red just so we can see it. So that's one of them. Nice kind of uh, square looking function. It's not y equals to x squared, but it's uh, square looking. And then the other explicit equation would be x squared minus uh, the square root of x to the fourth plus one. And again, I'm going to go ahead and make the pen width on that two, uh, two or did I do three? I might have done three. And I'll do this one in uh, maybe a like a purple or something like that. Two very different looking solutions. Uh, and in fact, on both of them, uh, you can see that the <clears throat> interval of definition is going to be negative infinity to positive infinity. And that actually fits with the uh, original functions. If I scroll down, well, you can't see it now. I don't know why it's not. Oh, there we go. Um, you can plug anything into those uh, into those two functions. So uh, it turns out the interval of validity for both is actually all real numbers. Not bad. We don't actually have any type of restriction. If there was a domain issue, we would have seen it within those functions. But this is a good example of using a graphing utility to get a really good view of these uh, these solution curves or integral curves.